Hello everyone and welcome back to Water Child Tarot. My name is Sarah and thanks for joining me on this follow-up video to Decks for Pride or Anytime. And I did do an original VR to Tom Benjamin's video. And then I watched a video by Laura of Aquamarine 18 and it got me thinking about um, my original video and why I didn't have an explicitly LGBTQ plus deck in my collection that I could point to. And um, long story short, uh, I hadn't found one that really resonated me. And so I went back to review what was available on the market um, right now. And I found one that's just sort of barely available, um, but it will be coming out in mass market um, sometime probably in the next year, so I'll get into that in a minute. So, so before I get into the specific deck and why I picked it, I do also want to uh, have a disclaimer to say that I apologize if um, my use of the word queer in my previous video or in this video or any video that I make um, is offensive to anyone or, or um, uncomfortable. Um, it is the, uh, the word, the term that I feel most identified with, but I acknowledge that this is a word that's being reclaimed and just as other words that used to be slurs or used to be used um, aggressively towards uh, different groups of people and used in a problematic and hateful way um, are not universally being reclaimed by all members of a particular community. And so um, while I might use the word queer to describe myself, I certainly don't want to put that on anybody else, especially anybody who's uncomfortable with it. So this is the deck that I want to discuss today. It is the Fifth Spirit Tarot by Charlie Claire Burgess. And before I get into this specific deck, let me just talk about why I hadn't picked this up before. I had seen this tarot deck back in 2020 when I first got into studying tarot in earnest and building a collection. And I think at that point I passed over this for a couple of reasons, um, mostly aesthetic -y kind of reasons. Um, the first was that there were a bunch of decks coming out on the market. There seemed to be a trend of like minimalist imagery with a beige background. And I'm not even sure that I fully processed or grokked what the Fifth Spirit Tarot was offering at that point. Um, to me, it looked like the Antique Anatomy Tarot. It looked like um, the Earthbound Oracle. It looked like a bunch of other decks that were coming out around that same time period. And so I think I kind of wrote it off um, as one of those, you know, sort of hipster decks, decks with minimal imagery. Um, and wasn't really thinking along the lines that I'm thinking along now. And then the other thing that had me struggling to work with this deck um, at the time was that it is very pippish. Um, the uh, scenery and the minor cards in particular does not have any figures in it. And you you get these scenes, um, some of which nod to the Rider Waite Smith uh, imagery, but not all of them have a really strong direct tie. And so um, I just wasn't sure if I could read with something that didn't have people in it um, or that was more uh, pip based or more minimalist. But I really liked the choices. I went back and watched a couple of reviews of this, including Tom Benjamin's very enth enthusiastic and kind of like, duh, why didn't I pick up on this deck before um, review of this. And I actually really do. <laughs> I really do like the uh, both the art style and then the choices, the creative choices that have gone into these cards. So I'm pretty confident that I'll be able to, to have some good readings with this. And I think one other reason I didn't pick up on this deck immediately um, is that it is marketed as a queer and inclusive deck for a world beyond bin binaries. And as a cis um, person who identify strongly as a woman, um, I felt like this might not be for me. I might not be the intended user or audience of this deck. Um, and that's something I've been kind of exploring and working on over the last year or so more intensively. Um, and again, seeing Tom Benjamin's review, seeing Laura talk about this deck, I've come to understand it in a different kind of a light. So um, while the author of this deck is non-binary and made it 
um, to be non-binary non inclusive, um, it's also not an exclusive deck. And so in that way, you know, I feel I feel comfortable using it. I feel comfortable in this space. I feel comfortable uh, with the characters in this deck. And we can start uh, looking at some of them. Um, so the first card that I will show you is the King of Cups. And so uh, the author uh, and artist clearly based their um, representation for this card on Fred Rogers, Mr. Rogers, who is a figure that I grew up with. Um, when I was a little kid, my mother was very strict about television watching in our household. I was allowed to watch two TV shows, Sesame Street, followed by Mr. Rogers, and that was it. So Mr. Rogers um, was very important to me. The show was very important to me growing up. I realized in hindsight he took a lot of risks. He had a black gay man um, actor on the show playing a policeman, um, which is just like kind of mind-blowing on a whole, so many different levels. Um, but he was very warm and inclusive in his show. And so to, to have that kind of emotional intelligence uh, represented in the King of Cups is really cool. But the other thing that this card drives home for me is that, you know, one of the key phrases from Mr. Rogers Neighborhood is, who are the people in your neighborhood? And I had not found, until I really took a more critical look at the Fifth Spirit, I hadn't found a deck that was marketed for the LGBTQIA plus community um, in a way that felt like my neighborhood, um, that felt like myself, and my friends and the people that I work with, um, and that's okay. You know, it's it's good that there's lots of different kinds of decks out there in the marketplace, and that we can have all different kinds of decks to suit different um, personalities, different identities, different interests, different ways of expressing ourselves. Um, I think that's excellent, but I just didn't feel as drawn or as comfortable or as much like. I resonated on a personal level with some other decks that are kind of in this, serving this very broad community. So what I like about this one, and I'll, I'll flip through some more cards as we talk about it, is these do feel like the people in my neighborhood. Um, this Hierophant card is a librarian. Hi, I'm a librarian. Um, I have a lot of friends who are, are librarians or work in education. Um, so th this kind of thing just really resonates with me. Um, this card in strength, instead of a lion, she has a pit bull. I have a pit bull. Um, a lot of my friends have pit bulls <laughs> um, or big dogs. And the idea that you can look uh, mean and aggressive and strong on the outside and have a mushball personality um, is one aspect of this card that I truly appreciate. So um, that's really cool. I love this sun card. I believe this is a self-portrait of the artist, Charlie, and this is their partner. Um, according to the guidebook. And I love this sun card um, both for just queer joy in general, but also of like this relaxed um, idea of being being able to truly relax and truly be yourself in public um, in a very open way. Um, that's a great message for the sun card. So there's, there's things like this that I have finally had some aha moments about. Um, with this deck. And I'm glad that I was able to get a copy of this before it completely disappears off the market um, in the original format. Now, um, Charlie Claire Burgess, as I understand it, has made a deal with Hay House to have this deck released by them, so it will be republished. Um, it will not have the Mr. Rogers card in it, though, um, and I'm sure it will not be on this cardstock. This is like black core standard um, playing card cardstock. It has a slight linen finish to it and it shuffles very well. The cards are extremely uh, thin and flexible. So I, I adore this. This is my number one pick for cardstock. Um, I do like the beige backgrounds because it's less like harsh on your eyes when you're, when you're looking at this, but the colors are still uh, saturated enough to stand out on the page or on the on the cards um, but what I can tell you is that there are still copies available from retailers so this is no longer available from Charlie's site it is sold out there but I got my copy from this place um, called Circle of Stitches and I will link the stockists page in the description box below 
um, so that you can try and find a stockist who still might have a few copies. Um, there are some international stockists as well. So if you're interested in this first edition, I suggest going and grabbing one. I don't like inducing FOMO in people and saying you must buy this, like this totally may not be your jam, but if you are interested in it, um, if you've been looking for something like this and you watch a walkthrough and you're like, yes, I need this, um, I suggest getting one uh, soon because the Hay House version, I'm sure, will be, you know, it'll be different. Um, the, the thing about the Hay House version is it's going to be a lot less expensive. It's probably going to be about half the price or less. So that's going to make it more affordable for folks. And that's not a bad thing. Um, but yeah, these are just some of the, the face cards. And I really like the choices. I like the fact that there's a variety of clothing styles, but nothing seems like it's going to go out of date. Um, Tom Benjamin pointed out in his review or first impressions of this deck that there's not a lot of technology here. So even though the deck feels fairly modern, like this person's wearing a shorts and a tank top, um, there's no like computers or fax machines or you know motorcycles or things like that here. Um, I also personally really resonate with this death card. I like this a lot. It reminds me of the um, phrase that's incorporated in many Buddhist chants, which is uh, through birth, old age, sickness, and death. Um, that's how the Tibetan Buddhists view our lifespan as those phases, birth, old age, sickness, and death. So um, that's what we see here. You know, we see the progression through birth, old age, sickness, and death, and then the cycle starts over again. So I enjoy that. Um, I also like that there's not just one uh, person in this deck with um, a disability, physical, a, a physical disability, but there's multiple. So there's a person in a wheelchair and there is a person with an amputated leg. There is a person with an amputated arm. And as we all know, a lot of disabilities are invisible and so they're hard to portray. But I just appreciate that Charlie um, didn't take as much of a, a tokenistic approach with their representations that they tried to incorporate things. I also love that there's a diviner in, in the deck. There's somebody who's practicing prognostication here. So um, it just, it's like, there's a lot of cards where I'm like, yay, that's in here. And yay, this other thing is in here. That's so cool. You know, there's somebody doing this, there's somebody doing that. I love skateboarding. There's lots of um, roller skating going on in this deck, which is also a favorite activity of mine. And a um, some of my friends are do roller derby. Um, I, I like this devil card just fine. I don't have any problems with it. And it actually reminds me of the Star Seeker Tarot in a way, which also shows like hands um, holding puppet strings. It's not entirely the way I view the devil, but it's, I would say maybe a component. It's more like um, we're, we're performing unhealthy self-soothing activities. Um, because we're stuck in a certain mode. You know, that's kind of how I read the devil uh, in a lot of cases. I also love that there's a gardener here. And I also kind of read this person as a potter. I don't, I mean, they're just, they're like embracing a seedling in a pot, but um, pottery, working with earth, working with clay is a really great uh, way to represent the earth suit. Um, and again, here in the wand suit, we have the three of uh, the Three of Wands or the Three of Fire, and it's about going out, exploring, taking a risk, going on an adventure, having fun. And I like that reading of the Three of Fire. Um, I also like the Ten of Fire is not about a burden, uh, which is not at all how I see the Smith Waite card. Um, it is about like stoking up for the future, for the next person to come along or for the next generation. So I'm, I'm glad that this is like a bonfire. That's a really cool image. A couple of uh, images that I had question marks about. Um, so this is the Four of Swords and this is the Four of Pentacles. Um, the Four of Pentacles is weird because it's like a disembodied clump of earth with a dead tr tree stump on top. So that's a little strange. I would have preferred seeing maybe something alive or sprouting coming out of this. Um, and the same thing with the Four of Swords, this is a cicada 
um, buried under the earth. You can see, um, it's very light on the card, but you can see the pathway that the cicada uh, larvae would have taken to burrow in, and then they're going to wait their time. Now, I, I like that this is like a long span of time. That's an interesting idea of sort of um, maybe incubating on something that's going to sprout forth. But I kind of think of this as like an earth soup thing again. So I'll just have to work with that a little bit. So, you know, does every single image perform at 100% for me? No, but in general, um, it's a really great deck. And I have very few decks where I'm like, every single card knocks it out of the park, you know? I'm always gonna have little quibbles uh, here or there. But I really like this deck. I like the art style. Um, again, I love the uh, variety of different um, representations of people. And they really do look like the people in my neighborhood and among the people that I uh, see in everyday life and spend time with and all of that. So um, I will leave you with that. Hopefully this video wasn't too long. And again, I will put the um, stockist list uh, in the show notes below in case you do want to try to get a copy of this first edition before it completely runs out of print. And um, I'm also going to put a couple of links to Laura at Aquamarine 18's uh, videos, her VR to this tag, as well as her um, detailed review of the queer tarot, because as someone who is, you know, not a uh, professional expert in gender studies and is frankly not as immersed in LGBTQIA plus um, culture as I was when I was younger, um, I learned a lot. So I appreciate that very much, Laura, and I hope if you're you know, if you want to hear more about these topics or think about them, um, to, to head on over to her channel and see what she has to say. I will also be doing some sample readings with this deck. I'm very excited to put it to use right away. So hopefully I'll have those to share with you very soon. So until then, take care and I'll see you again.